All right. Hello, all you happy people. How are you doing? We're going to try this again with different mic placement. Maybe this will sound better. They say these lav mics are omnidirectional. They're not. They're not. They lie. <laughs> it does kind of matter where they're pointing, it seems. So hopefully the audio will be better. Yep, I want to do a follow-up to the video on monopolies. Because there's something a lot of people were saying. I might cut out parts of this where I'm maneuvering around traffic, so apologies for that. But people were saying, hey, don't you know, you silly man, you silly, silly person, all they have to do is cutthroat competition, push their prices down to the floor and push everyone out of business. So I don't think you have to see the, um, the other video on monopolies, although I think you should because it goes into this scenario that I'm doing about Alice trying to take over all of the hardware stores in her town. And I want to go back to the point where she got everyone's hardware store except Aaron's. Aaron's hardware store is a family store and she's not going to sell at any price. And when I got to that point, I said Alice was foiled. Yep. I said, oh, there's nothing Alice can do about that because you can't make someone sell. Well, people were saying, hey, don't you know? All Alice has to do is push her prices down to the floor. So let's have diabolical Alice do that and see what happens. All right, wasn't sure what that one truck was going to do. <laughs> All right, so Alice is going to push her prices down to the floor. Let's get some numbers to work with. Let's say hammers cost $10, she's going to sell them for a dollar. Socket sets cost 30, she's going to sell them for three. Impact drills are 100, she's going to sell them for 10. You get the idea. 90% off everything. Oh boy, customers are going to love that, right? Yep, they love that. Well, let's think about this. She pushes them down to the floor and she's going to lose money on every sale. But, she figures, all she has to do is hold out, and if she holds out long enough, then Aaron will be driven into bankruptcy because Aaron won't be making any sales. And then she won't be able to keep the lights on, the power company will shut her off, the water will get shut off, all the stuff will get shut off. and she'll be driven out of business. What is going on up here? Okay, I've cut out this construction zone. That was potentially a, it was a mess. I wanted to pay attention to that and not having to be yammering onto y'all. So getting back into it. So, Alice has her plan. She implements it. She pushes all her prices down to the floor. And people start buying them. They start coming off the shelves. Word gets out. Oh, look how cheap that hardware is. And Alice is like, yeah, this is going to be working. Because if people are getting all their hardware from her, they're not going to be buying them from Aaron, right? And that's the way it goes, and that's the way it continues. Because she gets a shipment in, and they just go flying off the shelves. Oh, yeah, she get, it gets to the point where people are, like, camping out outside, waiting for the line, line going around, waiting for the shipment to come in. So they can get the cheap hardware. And they're buying all sorts of things. They're buying hammers and screwdrivers and uh, automatic drills and electric screwdrivers and hand saws and circular saws and angle grinders. They're buying all sorts of stuff. They're just filling up their carts with everything, buying hundreds and even thousands of dollars worth of hardware. And all the time, Alice is rubbing her hands with glee because she thinks 
that any time now, Aaron's going to give up the ghost. And she's just going to be out of business. And Alice will finally get her a monopoly. And so one day, not too long after, not too many days have passed, a couple of guys come in. They say, yeah, we need a couple of hammers. We're starting a project. We just need a couple of hammers. We heard you had those $1 hammers. We want those hammers. He says, well, I'm sorry. I'm sold out. But if you come tomorrow morning when the truck comes in, I'll have them for you. They're like, oh, man, I really wanted to get started on that today. Didn't want to have to wait till tomorrow. So the other guy says, well, you know, Aaron is selling hammers for $2. We can just go get the $2 hammers from her. Okay, sounds great. And they go. And Alice says, what? What? How? Erin is selling hammers for $2? She should only be able to sell them for $10. Because that was the price before, back when it was a competitive market, where competitive pricing would have pushed the markup down, well, would have been a markup. Man, markup was maybe like 10 cents a hammer or something like that. Markups aren't that much. You know, they make the money because they sell a lot of stuff. But, you know, for, for selling an individual item, you'd be surprised how little a store gets of that. So how is Aaron selling them for $2? If she... If she can only get them for $10, how is she selling them for two? And she stops. And she realizes. And her whole world comes crashing down around her. As her plan, as she realizes, is completely and utterly foiled. Do you know what it is? Do you know what Alice is now realizing? Do you know what Aaron has been up to? Do you know why this is just not going to work? If you think you do, leave a comment. Put your guess down in the comment for what you think Aaron has been doing. Let's see how many of you can figure this out. Yeah, because Alice has figured it out. And it's that, it's that feeling you get when you realize that all along you've just been planting the seeds of your own destruction. Then there is no coming back from that. She is just so far in the hole there's no getting out of it. And she did it to herself. So do you have your comment? Have you posted below? what it is you think Aaron was doing? I'll tell you what Aaron was doing. You know those people who were camped outside waiting for the truck to get here so, Al so Alice can open her store? And they came in and they just filled their buggies with all sorts of stuff. Do you know what they were doing? They work for Aaron! <laughs> yep, they work for Aaron. Alice, this whole time, has been unwittingly supplying Aaron with cheap inventory. Aaron can get a hammer from Alice for a dollar, put it on her shelf for two dollars. She'll have no shortage of people to send to do that. You can just stop people on the street. Hey, you want to make some easy money? Go to Alice's Hardware. You buy $100 worth of stuff, I'll pay you $150 for it. You buy $500 worth of stuff, I'll pay you $750. You buy $1,000 worth of stuff, I'll pay you $1,500. Easy money for them and easy money for Aaron. Because now she can put a hammer on the shelf for $2 with a 50 cent markup, which is much bigger than the markup she was getting when she was selling them for 10. It's like five times the markup. 
maybe I lowballed the markup. Maybe it was like 20 cents or something, but now it's 50 cents. She would not have been getting a 50 cent markup before. So yeah. That's what she's been doing. And she's just got a whole hardware store full of stuff that she bought from Alice that she's able to sell at a bigger markup. And on every single sale, Alice is losing money and Aaron is making money. And Alice's plan is foiled. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say the same thing as last. I actually had someone in the... And the comment was like, well, he didn't know about Standard Oil. I mentioned Standard Oil, so don't even, don't even try that. All right, so you're going to want real-world examples. Well, I got your real-world examples. Let's start with Herbert Dow, the founder of Dow Chemicals. He was just a lowly chemistry teacher in a teaching hospital, but he invented a method of using electrolysis to extract bromine from river water. And bromine was big because it was used in a lot of uh, industrial cleaning chemicals, things like that. And at that point, you can only do it through an expensive chemical process. And there was a cartel that managed that pretty much over the whole world called the Brom Convention. Now, they were a monopoly. The country of Germany granted them a monopoly. In Germany, no one else can compete with them. They didn't have any guarantee like that anywhere else, but that did allow them to have market dominance in Europe. So Herbert Dow comes along and starts selling it cheaper. Well, they try to outcompete him in America, and they fail. They tried to go to the American government. This totally would have worked today, but back then, they were a little more conscientious about following the Constitution. Not by much, but by enough that they were like, you know, we're not going to intervene on your behalf. He wants to sell bromine. He can sell bromine. Let him sell it at whatever price he wants, because this was before, like, the Sherman Act and all that crap. So they said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it really cheap. I'm not going to remember the exact amounts. I might look it up and put them on the screen because I'm going to get them wrong, so the real amounts might be on the screen. But it was something like they were selling bromine at 45 to 50 cents a pound. Herbert Dow was selling it at more like 35. Well, they started just dumping bromine on the American market at 10 cents a pound. And in fact, they had a fund separately set aside for this very purpose so that they could do this as much as they wanted. So while they're doing that, they notice someone else starts selling raw meat in Europe for 15 cents. You know who it was? It was Herbert Dow. He sent in his purchasers to buy up all the bromine and sell it on the European market. And just like the situation with Alice, with every sale, Dow was making money, they were losing money. And that allowed him to get the market in both the U.S. and Europe, when before he was just operating in the U.S. I got another example. Robert Gordon... He was a slave. This is a little bit earlier. This is before the Civil War. He was in Virginia, working in the coal yards. And they told him he could do whatever he wanted to with, I believe, slack is the term they used. That's like the leftover stuff, the coal dust, the crumbly parts that aren't worth anything. They told him he could just do whatever he wanted to with those. Well, he figured out a way to make that valuable and sell it. You might be wondering what he did. So am I. Unfortunately, history doesn't record that. So we don't know exactly what Robert Gordon did to make this slack so valuable. 
But whatever it was, he did it. He was able to sell it. And he was able to make enough money to buy his freedom. So then he went up to Cincinnati and started his own coal yard. Well, the other Cincinnati coal yards, the ones owned by white people, well, they didn't like that too much. The, so they decided they were just going to dump a, a bunch of cheap coal on the market, sell it at a loss, drive them out of business. But it was the same thing. He just sent in his purchasers to buy it up and sell it himself. He's like, thanks for the cheap coal, everyone. I'd have to look how much his estate was worth when he died, but he became a millionaire in today's terms. He converted to today's dollars. He was a million. He made himself a millionaire. Former slave, bought his own freedom, became a millionaire. Great story. All right. I hear you. I hear you cry. That works with products. I see that. But I bet you it won't work with services. You gotta think about services, Shane. Come on, man. Think about services. Okay. Let's go back even further in time, where we've got cattle cars on railroads. Now, this was before refrigerated rail cars. So if you were a beef farmer and you wanted to sell your beef out east, what can you do? Well, you can't butcher the cow and then send it out on the rails out east. It would spoil. So what do you do when you don't have refrigeration? Well, you just transport the cattle live. And you let biology keep the meat fresh. And that was big business. And there were two railroads. The dominant one was the New York Railroad. And that wasn't run by the city or state of New York. That was a private company, and that's just what they called it. The other was the Erie Railroad, a much smaller railroad. And so the New York Railroad decided that they were going to put the Erie Railroad out of business. And so they were going to offer their cattle cars at whatever abnormally low price it would have been, 10 cents a head or whatever. Just this crazy low price. To, uh, try and push the Erie Railroad out of business because although there were plenty of other cargo that they could do, the beef was the big one. That was the big one there, the cattle cars. And if they could stop them from getting the cattle car business, then they could pretty much drive them out of business because that's a big chunk, chunk of their business that they'd lose. So without the cattle cars, they wouldn't do as well. Now, this should work, right? There's no way they could do what Herbert Dow and Robert Gordon did, right? Well, Okay, they couldn't do that. But you know what they could do? Buy stock in the cattle moving companies. <laughs> yep, because they were about to have a boom, weren't they? They were about to have themselves a boom. With all the cheap cattle moving that you could do because of those cheap prices from the New York Railroad. Who was offering that at a loss to the benefit of the cattle moving companies and their stockholders, including the Erie Railroad? Yes, sir, you cannot keep a good entrepreneur down. No matter what you do, no matter how clever you are, well, other people have the right to be clever too, you know. And they got the incentive to. They got the incentive to be clever. And they're going to be clever. They're not just going to sit by and take it. So that's the lesson. If there's not a government you can go to and whine and get them, you know, to crush them and take them down for you and get your dominance in the market, then there's not a whole lot you can do about it. And that's the lesson for this time. It's not going to work. And we have historical examples of it not working. 
unlike everyone else who don't have historical examples, they can just do the usual whining about Standard Oil, which we've responded to a million times and stuff like that. The total number of, of examples they have is zero. And that's just how it is. Ours works in theory, and it works in practice. Theirs doesn't work either way. And that's how it is, and that's how, it, that's how it's always been, and that's how it's always going to be. And thank you so very much for watching. Comment for the comment God shares for the Share Throne. Please hit like, subscribe, and the bell. And share this video everywhere to try and get it above the shadow banning, which has been really bad with these last few videos about the WHO. Uh, the, YouTube does not like it when you criticize the WHO. And it's another one of those cases where... What this guy is doing. It's another one of those cases where you can see the moment where the shadow banning kicks in. And one of them did get a nice little boost briefly. I think that was someone sharing it. So thank you to whoever that was. But then the shadow banning kicks right back in again. So it's a fight, but it's a good fight. So it also helps tremendously to go to donate.bogosity.tv and give what you can. You can donate with PayPal or Venmo, or you can donate with cryptocurrency. It's hard with traditional fiat to donate like less than a dollar. And so if you just want to give me a few pennies, yeah, you know, with all of the fees and everything that comes out of that, it's just not going to work. But cryptocurrency, uh, you can just give me pennies in that. Like Dash, Litecoin, Monero, I think those are the three big ones I have. I also have a Changely link where you can where you can choose the crypto you want to use. And just give me pennies. If everyone who watch, everyone who watches my videos sends me one penny, I'll make like ten times as much as I will from the the uh, advertising. <laughs> That's just what it is. That's just how it is. And so if you can't give me a dollar, which would cover a hundred people watching, maybe you give me ten cents and cover ten of them. That would work. That'd be great. Every little bit helps. Every little bit. You have no idea. So, uh, thank you so very much for watching. Until next time, stay strong and be free.